Welcome to Oregon Voters Digest, the program that brings forward the social and political issues that are important to people living here in the Pacific Northwest. And now, your host, Bruce Broussard. Welcome again to this segment of the Oregon Voters Digest. I'm Bruce Broussard, your host. Well, folks, we're going to have quite a show today. As you know, one of the major issues facing us here in this state is the whole issue of education. We've got a new superintendent. A state superintendent that happens to be the governor of the state, and that's uh, John Kitzhopper, and it still is an issue. We're still trying to figure out what what do we do, and what do we do, if you will, towards the education of, of our kids and getting them out in society so they can make it for that matter. Well, you remember early on, um, we took a position here on Oregon Voters Digest. We we sought out a person who had, we'd been we'd uh, been interviewing and talking to issues across the board. And in fact, um, I'll, I'll, read, I'll, I'll read a couple of things that uh, was handed out during that particular time. The, the person said, "Well, gee whiz, I'm going to I'm going to respond to some of those concerns, Bruce, that that you were bringing up here on the Oregon Voters Digest, and also the, from the viewing audience." And I'm talking about a gentleman by the name of Steve Buell. Remember this? You probably have got a flyer like this in the mail at one point in time when he was running for office. He was running for the school board and said, put Steve Buell's experience, knowledge, and background to work for Portland's children. And he goes on to say there were about there were about six different points he went through. And I'll just throw them out real quick. Like, good, solid, well-rounded education for all students, an excellent school in every neighborhood, better communication with parents, teachers, and citizens, minimize the negative effects of high-stake testing, improved, engaging education in the middle grades, spend money where it most directly benefits students, Remember those points that he made on that meal out that you should have gotten, whatever? Well, what we want to do that in this particular show, we want to get a sense of what is he doing over there on that school board? Is he, is he responding to the issues that um, he basically publicized, if you will, in this, in this flyer? But better yet, I tell you what, I've got a short clip, probably about 15 minutes, that, um, that we had right here on the Oregon Voters Digest. And it sort of gives you a verbal definition in terms of how he responded to, to the points that were made. Let's look at this clip and then we'll get right back to Steve right after the break. How you doing? Pretty good. As usual, you're much too kind. Bruce, oh, no, but, gee, well, yeah, no, there you we, go. we're never too kind. But, <laughs> <laughs> but no, it's very important that uh, Oregonians need to know. I mean, that's the bottom line. They need to know what's going on. I mean, you got the media out there. They, they're throwing out information. They see all sorts of characters. As you know, in, from the state of Oregon standpoint, the governor basically elected to be the superintendent of schools yep, and education. Superintendent of schools now. The superintendent of schools. He, he recently hired a gentleman by the name of Rudy Crew, a guy who has been going around the country, supposedly has kind of like put things together, if you will, and uh, hopefully productive. But the bottom line is that he's got his own school board. He's got his own person out there as, as, as his own assistant, his superintendent, and things are happening. So the bottom line, Steve, we want to know what's going on. So let's just touch bases just briefly. Uh, what's what's the, from a national perspective? What do you think about uh, President Obama's situation? One is the selection of uh, uh, of the uh, the uh, education czar, right? Education well, yeah, now, Arnie Duncan's been Arnie in education okay, right. head for a long time. Uh, basically, they've been consistently going down the wrong uh, the wrong path. Uh, in what way? Kind in, of like just something. Well, they're, they're they kind of there, there's a movement in the country that's the corporate education movement. Really, mm -hmm. it's the reform movement, and it's basically corporations with a lot of money and some major leaders, you know, the Waltons, the Koch brothers, Bill Gates, pushing their agenda in education, and the, and Arnie Duncan really has bought in on top of it. Uh, and it creates a lot of problems in schools. Crea it's creating a lot of problems in Oregon, and it's creating a lot of problems across the country. And uh, it's one of the reasons that we helped start Oregon Save Our Schools is kind of to fight against this movement mm -hmm. that where corporations make a lot of money and the kids suffer while the kids suffer. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, you talked about it being in the classroom, and it's not like they're oriented towards the classroom, mm -hmm. oriented towards uh, a lot of other issues that in the long run make them a lot of money. So I take it that, that, uh, that President Obama is going to probably retain Duncan for the next four years? I don't know. There's I'm no not, not privy in there to, okay, to right, that right. situation. So maybe, I would, maybe, we'll, maybe we'll revisit that maybe about a couple months I, from now. I, so. just, I just read a book uh, called uh, The Signal and the Noise that talks oh, about how hard it is to predict things <laughs> oh. <laughs> and, and what you really need to predict. I don't have enough to predict that one. I well, knowing you, buddy, you. I, I know we'll have some predictions. <laughs> so we'll give it a couple months and then we'll yeah, come I back and Yeah, I got some other predictions, we'll, we'll sure. Visit some. Let's, get, let's get down to the state of Oregon. Okay, fine. Okay. Uh, let's talk just a little bit about um, the fact of the matter is about government. Uh, 
Governor Kitzhopper, State of Oregon, Governor of Oregon, uh, opted to go on and assume the chairperson of the school education. Talk a little bit about that. Well, what do you think about this? Well, what, what originally happened was the business community, uh, with a lot of leadership in Portland, a man by the name of Duncan Weiss is yeah. the head of the committees, they put together, uh, they put together an education plan which I don't think makes a lot of sense, and most of the educator friends of mine don't think it makes a lot of sense. In what and way, specifically? Because it doesn't directly deal with the schools. It's all periphery stuff, kind of indirect things. Uh, and, and they put together, they had a, a committee that they put together originally mm -hmm. called LearnWorks, which came up with these ideas, which were basically borrowed from the, the business community. And then they, they moved that into the governor's plan, borrowed again from the business community. Mm -hmm. And then the governor set up a, a committee to kind of say, should we, how should, wh how should we be spending this money? And that committee was met in secret hmm. and was basically borrowed from, you know, Duncan Weiss, the guy who was ahead of the LearnWorks. Uh, guy now, is that the appointed board uh, you're talking uh, about? No, no. That, mm -hmm. I mean, got to the appointed board, the appointed board, board. yet. Okay. No, but that was all set up. Set up. And I so essentially what you have is a governor's plan. They're spending a lot of money. We estimate, when I say we, I mean Oregon Save Our Schools, estimates pretty close to $225 million wow. out of that, out of money that's really not even in his education budget. It's set aside, and as I understand funds, it. But I'm not, a, I'm not an expert on that. Okay. And it's still right. kind of floating around down there. Okay. Uh, but that that particular plan that he put forward is basically the business plan. So essentially you had the business community in the state of Oregon and the city of Portland making the educational policy for the state of Oregon. Well, who's sitting on the board and, from an educational standpoint? What about Susan Castillo? Was she part of, the, part of that process? N well, there were some people who sat in on it, but it basically never changed from the beginning. And now you have, from that, from that came the that Oregon did. Educational Investment Board, which okay. is kind of the super board that the governor chairs when he doesn't chair it. A lady by the name of Nancy Golden, who was the superintendent, w w is retiring. She, she still has the superintendent of Springfield. She, she uh, chairs that board. I've gone to every meeting but two. I was in California at two hmm. of those meetings. Hmm. And uh, it's pretty bad. The only, there's only one education, there's only one teacher, actual K-12 teacher, on that on, on that board. particular board, uh, and she's an OEA, the OEA rep, and she has <laughs> all sorts of questions mm -hmm. all the time. Well, what about Ron Sachs? You got you got a yeah, you got, on you got Ron there. Saxton and on the there. You got Julia Brim Edwards, Julia Brim who used to be a Nike Nike board. person, business people, and yeah. in, in a lot to a huge re and you've got. See, what they tried to do, what the governor's plan did, and that, this isn't the part we don't like about the plan so much. The, mm -hmm. the stuff we don't like is mostly the K-12 stuff. That's where there's, they're not getting anything good in there. They, they do some, they're trying to do a P-20, you know, a, a birth to 20 system. So they get kind of what they call a seamless education system. Like, the, 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 you so, on that. so you take the, you connect, you do a better job of connecting the preschool things to the, to the K-12 system, and you okay. do a better job of connecting the K-12 to the uh, community colleges and the college system. Okay. And so you, you try and get a better flow, which which is the idea. And that basic idea, there's nothing wrong with that, mm -hmm. really. It's how they go about the K-12 stuff that's really the mess, that they, they don't have, it's like they don't have any idea because they borrowed the business plan. It's like if I got all my school teacher friends, and we all went down and decided we were going to run the business plan for some big company or for for the the uh, Portland Business Alliance. Mm -hmm. You know, we were the ones who knew how to do it, I mean, as if we do. It's just, it's the reverse of that. And so it, it's crazy, and Oregon's gone that way. Kitsopper's not an educator. Mm -hmm. He's he's uh, an ex-doctor. And so in healthcare, he may be pretty good. I'm not sure. But I know in education, it's pretty bad. But he, but, he, but the claim is that he feels that he cares for kids, and he's concerned about these dropout rates and this, that, and the other, the, all the things that a lot, of, a lot of folks are concerned about. That's Don't the, you feel comfortable exactly. with, with, with his, his No, position? I feel comfortable with how they talk. Like Rudy Crew, who's, uh, who's really the... And who's Rudy Crew for the benefit of... Uh, Rudy Crew was the ex-superintendent of Tacoma, I think Sacramento, uh, Dade County, which is Miami, pretty mm -hmm. big, and New York. He was superintendent of schools in those places. He's a well-known educator across the country, and they hired him for about 280000 a year uh, to come in, plus a lot of benefits, to come in and kind of 
make this P20 system, set it up. Mm -hmm. And when he goes out and talks, like he went out to Grant last week, and you might have seen some things in the newspaper, right. that story had some nice kids. I, one kid wrote in and said, wow, he really inspired me and stuff. Yeah, he's a really good talker. He's a really good. But he also cited but, goals, goals for that board. Exactly. Well, that exactly. So the, he comes out and gives a good talk, which inspires people. Right. I have no problem with that. That's good. I love that. And then he has goals at the end. Okay. But what's in between? It's, it's a garbage dump in between. Hmm. They don't have anything really that's going to really reach the goals that they set out necessarily, but on top of that, the goals aren't the right goals. What were some of the goals that he was talking well, the about? Well, the, the major goal is, is the reading scores okay, right. and the math scores. They're all based around testing. The whole system is based around testing. And so when you read something like, for instance, he has a plan called the Oregon Education Investment Board Strategic Plan Summary. It just mm -hmm. came out. Everybody ought to take a look at that and see. What can you access there, But can the you? problem is you can access it at the OEIB website. OEIB. Yeah, Oregon Education Investment board website but the problem is when you read this it sounds pretty good but when you l really know what's going on behind it, it it's it's nothing there it's like going down through one of those facades in the old movie studios you know MGM and they had this beautiful city out there and there's nothing behind it hmm. that's the way well what's the that's the way this that's the way this working the example for instance you know they yeah. talk about achievement yeah well achievement means to you and I, achievement means a kid does better in school than he's doing, right? But in actuality, what the, the only achievement they're, will, they're willing to really talk about a measure is the test scores. And the test scores have a lot, the testing has a lot of major problems with them that, have, that are not being addressed. You know, they're focusing teachers who are giving all these tests and they're making it so important, they're, they're labeling your school. People thought, okay, no child left behind, they'll get right, us that's away. What I thought, they'll get us away from labeling the school that, because we didn't do the, the same waiver. Format, it's the, same concept? Uh, the waiver isn't any different, really. In fact, in, the, in some ways, it's worse wow. because now, the waiver wants you to kind of have the teachers measured based on the test scores, which, of course, it's not an accurate measurement. Drive you crazy if you were a teacher because uh, it, 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 those particular, it doesn't work like that. You can't really take those test scores and get an accurate measurement for how the teacher's doing. It, for one thing, it's way too narrow, and two, it's statistically inaccurate. So why did they do away with the no child left behind well, the, under the Bush administration? What's the deal? Because I thought, I thought Oregon was making the point early on about say, hey, we need to get, get this thing out the way because it's causing us all kinds of problems here in terms of ratings, right? Yeah, and that's probably why they did away with it. So now all of a sudden they're bringing it back? Basically, it's the same thing. You oh still label God. the schools. Yeah. You still have all the testing. In fact, now they're going to increase the testing, and they have a whole new system of tests that they're going – because what they did, they, they came in and they took – this is how if you really look at education in a little – depth, you, the people who are just out there and just say, hey, that sounds pretty good, we're going to have new standards. They call them the Common Core standards. Mm -hmm. Common Core, they're brand new standards. So we're going to increase the standards. Well, that sounds pretty good at, the first, at first glance. Yeah, yeah, that can increase the standards for kids. But what they, and they put them in 45 of the states, at least, have them. I think mm -hmm. California was, I think maybe 46 now, because California has them now. And they what they basically do are just different, little different standards than what well, you had the Oaks test in Oregon. So you got a little different standards, and you have them in 45 states. So what do you need if you have new standards? Yeah. Well, you need new tests that test to the standards, right? So you got 45 states. These tests are not cheap. In Oregon, the last I heard, I wouldn't live or die by this statistic, mm -hmm. but it's like $9 million just to correct the tests. What? Nine million just to correct the test. Hundreds of millions of dollars in for the for the cost of tests, say in Texas. I mean, there we're talking hundreds of millions of dollars. The company that's going to ha have the testing or sell the tests, that whole thing, they're making hundreds of millions of dollars. They love it. Switch them all. It's not really because the standards go up. In fact, a lot of the standards they didn't even have teachers really involved in creating them. You know, I, I mean, it, the more you dig, the worse it gets. Hmm. And so you have these standards cross country, 45 states. There are 45 states, they sell the same test all the way across. So it doesn't cost them as much to make the test because they used to have to go do one for Oregon, do one for Washington. Washington has a different tests than Oregon. Now everybody has the same standards, going to have the same. There's two types of tests. The one Oregon is doing is called the SBAC. And uh, 
and that particular test is going to be new. So somebody's making money there and making money here and making money there. And they're now want to put all the testing on computers. So you got to have enough computers. And then you got to have the computer programs, and then you got to re up them um, every, you know, yeah, computers see, and all that. And so somebody's I'm making a this, fortune. Right? And under what about the, the end of the day, though? What about, the, what about the, the young people going into society? Are they prepared? No. They're not prepared. No, and they get, they're not prepared anymore. They're not prepared anymore from the testing. In fact, the testing generally makes their education worse. I believe, and what? so does, you know, we believe that the testing makes it worse because what it does, it focuses people down only on those tests. Not only, but I mean, it focuses them down so strongly on the tests and the test scores. I mean, that's all you know about some schools now. You know, I give you a school, you say, hey, they're test and I tell you what the test score is, but what are they really like? What kind of school is it? Is it really a good school or is it just kind of focused around those tests? Because when you focus on the test, you do two things. One, the more pressure you put on, you're putting a lot of pressure on, teach to the test. You better believe it. And the second thing is you narrow your curriculum way down. So a lot of, you know, a lot of people believe that, well, at least they're paying attention to the kids' scores. Okay, well, well, but we always did that. But let, but let's, let, I'm, I'm, a, I'm, I'm going to sort of like act, act yeah, as, yeah, as, as yeah, a governor. I'm going to yeah. act as a governor. Okay, the reason why I'm doing this, Steve, is the fact of the matter is, is that, uh, as you know, Intel and Nike now, I'm going to give them a tax break. And as a result of that, uh, they're going to guarantee me so many jobs for Oregonians, et cetera, in this particular state. So therefore, what's going to happen is that these kids are going to be graduating. They're going to be able to go to work for Intel and Nike as a result of what I'm doing here in the education system. Well, yeah. That, Am I preparing the kids enough to do this? No. Don't you think and, I'm doing that? And you're deluded is what I think <laughs> because no, the education isn't working particularly well, but the reason is the new reforms more than the old stuff. People talk about, okay, what's the status quo? Well, the actual status quo of education in the state of Oregon is testing and no child left behind. And now the waiver, which is not very much removed. That's the real status quo of the education. You don't think your kid's getting an education and they're probably, they may not be. See, it, it, it breaks down in a couple ways. One, if you're in a poor school, economically poor, where the kids struggle generally more and the test scores are lower, then you're going to push those test scores, test, test, right. test. But if you're in a school where the test scores are fine, you're not going to worry about them. You're going to keep giving a broader education. So in essence, where people say, well, at least they're paying attention to poor kids now. It, it's the reverse, wow. generally, because the poor kids are now getting a way worse education even than they were before. I mean, there's things you need to do to get kids a good education. We're not focused on that at all. All we're doing, we're cutting, we're cutting money. The money's been, you know, I mean, what, 324 yeah, teachers in Beaverton, you know, you, you try and find an uh, actual librarian wow. in a middle school. When I was on the school board back in 1981 or so, I right. had this deal with libraries. And one of the things I talked about a lot was that, a, like an elementary school, it should almost be built around the library. Right. You got kids reading, books, reading, reading, books, yeah, reading books, but, books, but, yeah. but way more, of the, and especially in a lot of homes where you, kids don't even have any hardly right, books, exactly. and they, they don't get that encouragement that they need. So we take the library away, and instead we ram those tests. Now, is that a good education well, system? No. See, you know, no. that's, a good, that's a good point you raised. Let's go back during that particular time. Which one was, of these points you was sitting, a good one, Bruce? No, 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 the point that I'm making that was really good was when you were, in fact, on the board during that particular era. I can remember Benson High School. I can remember Voc Ed in the schools, yeah, et cetera, et cetera. Is, is a, and because is poor after. kids have to have a reference of some sort to basically well, get into they the need You are watching Oregon Voters Digest. This program can be seen again on these channels on these dates and times. Tell a friend.
Okay. Well, you're back. We're back, folks. We've got Steve here now. You've got a sort of an intro in terms of before he got on the school board. Now he's on the school board. He's made some predictions. He he cited, if you will, some of the some of the points that he was going to focus on when he got on the school board. And uh, you know, and so here we are now. Today we're going to get an update right now from Steve, and we'll just jump right in. Steve, welcome. How are you doing? Thank, thank good, you. Good, good, good. Nice to be here. Fantastic. As always. Fantastic. Well, look here. You know, I, I identified. Uh, we, we 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 cited uh, all six of the points that you were making as far as your platform when you were running for office. Uh, were there any areas there that? Well, some of the areas that I was thinking about that I think you didn't touch on when we we did that little intro piece was minimize the negative effects of high stake testing. Now I'm actually that, that is it's a, it's hard to tell if you're making any progress okay. on the school board because the school board themselves doesn't really do anything. They do everything in the back rooms. You can't really see what's happening. I thought you and, were going to correct that. I mean, I'm I, working and working I, I, and working to correct that. Know? I'm working like crazy to what's correct that. What's it going to take? Do we? But, <laughs> It may take a couple new members mm. a year and a half down okay. the line. I, right. I can't seem to convince them to understand that that a government body has a responsibility to act according to a, a way that makes sense for good government. And we're, we're not... A little transparency, not, maybe. Huh? Uh, right. I, I do have the superintendent saying that she's going to put together a committee that's going to look at the te high stakes testing problems mm -hmm. in the school district not really the problems mm -hmm. in my words the problems but she's going to look at that so i guess she could say i've made a little progress there okay. Uh, okay. but boy it's like pulling teeth on that one wow. and because right. we we're now going to the common core and so we're spending time and all this time and energy in the common core which has three parts to it you have the standards right then you have the testing that they're going to do which is just like the testing now only we're going to do way worse than we do now everybody there's a big deal new york's already got into it there's fighting all over the whole state of new york over how how bad the school kids are doing now according mm -hmm. to those new common core standards mm -hmm. and, and and so and then we're gonna how we're implementing it and we're just kind of pushing and pushing to implement it and we don't get tested till next year, but it's going to be a disaster. But well, you know, there was this big I mean, law about the, the the no child left behind. That no no child left behind was mm -hmm. not a good thing. It sounds as if it's the same deal. It's What's the, the same deal? deal. It's the same deal, only on steroids. On steroids. Now, Jesus now, Christ. now they want. So we'd to, been better off with no child left behind. <laughs> I mean, it, it, you got a better. Better branding. off leaving a couple of kids behind, maybe. Yeah, but I you don't got, know. A, got yeah. a better branding than what we got right now. Well, common Core. In fact, it, I'm somewhat confused. I don't know what it means anyway. Is that a Common Core? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Well, they what took off the Common Core state standards because they didn't because the fact that they put them in all in 45 of the 50 states. Okay. Adopted them. Well, somebody's making a huge amount of money, you know, huge amount of money, hundreds of millions of dollars. Uh, Bill Gates himself spent 15 million pushing them. I mean, you have all the stuff, and I talked to it earlier on the on that. Well, the uh, Obama administration not pushing this issue, right? The Common Core. Oh yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. They're, this signed oh, off yeah, on this. Right out, Arnie Duncan, right out of his off, boom, push. Come on. Oh no, oh it's huge. But why was this big complaint about the No Child Left Behind piece? They just basically pick up the whole package, well, they had, almost like the Affordable Care Act, so to speak. In, huh? in, uh, <laughs> in uh, No Child Left Behind, they had these. The, they had 100% as the standards coming I mean, in, I think it was 2015. You had to get 100% of your kids, and no one was is gonna, no one's ever probably going to be able to do that. So wow. they, that's where they backed off now to waiver. It's the same thing, though. You can get your school yanked out from underneath you if you don't score. Same concept. Good. Same concept, and, we, and we're doing a rotten job of dealing Ooh. with it. Well, we really got to have you on that board. We need a couple more people on that board there for sure until we really get down to business. What about improve engaging education in the middle grades? I mean, that was an area that you'd said something about. The, the all, what, what I'm not making any, I haven't made any progress on that at all. <laughs> and, and, and What's the holdup? Well, for, we're working on, we are doing one thing, and the other thing that I did that's been pretty good that I've been working with, I, mm -hmm. I can't take credit for this part at all, but I've been working with it, and, and it is the CTE, and you know, the vocational ed piece. CTE, what does that mean? Well, you've got, it's uh, technical engineering. Okay, and, okay. And, the, and uh, it's... The vocational ed oh. piece, yeah, the you piece. Got yeah, when I did voc ed, I figured oh, I'd jump God, right to it. Oh, and we're I'm actually making now. some progress. Well, we're rebuilding three schools, the three high schools. Okay. You know, and, and and so the question is, do you leave space in those high schools when you build them for 
the CTE programs okay. for vocational ed programs, mm -hmm. and they didn't have any space for really? them. So what you got to do if you want to put in vocational ed programs, eventually what you got to do is go back and what add on, which is going to be impossible really on the bond. So we fought, we being uh, uh, Tom Curler and I and, and uh, Pamela Knowles, who's on the school board, is okay. pushing for we want to set aside space so you can do that. Hmm. And uh, well, Jefferson uh, still has storage. You know, they they got storage. Stuff. Well, they they're got, not rebuilding. In, in the they're not rebuilding. They got Jefferson. a lot of buildings up there with a bunch of bunch of storage space in there. I mean, can't, why can't just clean that stuff up and bring in auto mechanics and well, you might be able to do that. We're not like focused that. on it. We're we're trying to begin to push it for every. Uh, for every high school. All, all the schools are going to have voc ed now. No, that's what we're pushing. Pushing? Uh, how they, that's well, what heard the that school before. board is When pushing. are you going to get it on, Exactly. Steve? We exactly. sent you over there to put, put <laughs> exactly. voc ed in all exactly. these schools well, for these kids. The question is, let's go to the middle schools. Now, how about in the middle grades? Okay. Voc ed in the right. middle grades. Okay. Okay. Well, we're not even there yet. That's why I say I'm not really making any progress there. See, I was sort of we're still these... messing with the high schools. I want to get it down into the middle schools, yeah, of course, I, I, too. I, I was getting excited by a little voc ed because I noticed in the Portland Observer there was a front page piece up there where uh, uh, an African American, if you will, uh, there was a new principal at Benson High School and he was really into engineering and voc ed and this, that, and the other. But I thought it was all over the. I thought it was well, entire Benson, school. Well, Benson, of course, is in. No, it hasn't moved. It, we're Jesus. we're still fighting the fight. Still fighting so the to fight. Speak. Okay, but you're still get, on top of it. Uh, you're trying to be. All right, all right. Trying to be. We've had some really great help, and we've got some uh, uh, big meeting coming up uh, okay. this month dealing okay. with vocational ed, trying to bring in people from the community, good, and good. and and uh, Tom Curler is doing a real good job leading that, and and Pamela Knowles has been great, and oh, I, we've been the three people. Uh, oh, good. Uh, good. Bobby Regan good. is supporting, pretty oh, really? very supportive. So we've oh, got gee. we we're starting to move. Oh, we're getting there, folks. We got Voke. Thanks, Steve. How about spend spend money where it most directly benefits students? Now that's a big one, that David. I mean, you know, I mean, we still got this fight now. With you guys trying to get the negotiation with the teacher's contract and this, that, and the other. You got, you the, got the budget on coming side. up. You got budget, the budget coming, coming up pretty soon. The budget. To, you kind of bring it all together a little bit on this. You, you're budget. spending money all over. You're finding money, $16 million. $16 million. I mean, how in the hell did you find $16 million? I mean, I don't know. Is, really is there, more, is there more money in that pot? I mean, look, I want you to talk a little about find another that. $16 million uh, someplace out there. Uh, that would be nice. Of, letters of expectations. I mean, you got all kinds of little goodies going on. Please respond as, as best you can. I, I put a he heck of a list up. Well, you got Go the, the list. sixteen million. We found sixteen okay. million dollars. Okay. The, some of it supposedly we knew we were going to find, but some but where? Of it, I mean, okay, come on now. Well, they it came up. In, we spent less money in some area. We cut back, and in, in we cut back in some areas, and ended up with more money than we. We spent less money than we thought we were going to. Is that as a result and, and of a new so, accountant? You got you just hired a new accountant. I I don't. You I, I don't know, want to get caught up in. I, I mean, uh, you know, I mean, we are paying someone, right? To to to. You to, would to, think to, so. Well, you you am would I, think so. Am and I wrong? No, or no, something? no, no. I don't think you're wrong. So it's how just, can someone it, find? It, well, there, so we put eight million. What we did with the money that we found <laughs> was we put eight million Four. in this year and eight million in next year. Okay. Okay. So we came down and the superintendent. Shows up and says, "We found sixteen million dollars. We want to spend eight of it this year." Which okay, that makes sense. And here's the plan of how I want to spend it. Right. And I'm going, "Yeah, okay, thank you." Now let's discuss this at the school board. No, no. The the the. But it's the it's the, the board's money, you know. It's the, the, well, yeah, you it's the people's so. money. Superintendent puts forth plan, and and the plan had a handful of parts. Uh, one of it was to spend about. 30 FTE, FTE, which is a full-time teacher, and then okay. like a, 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 a assistant, educational assistant, okay. an aide in the classroom is a half time because right. they get paid about a half. Okay. And so they had 30 FTE uh, to spend to lower class size. And I'm going, very mm -hmm. good. Okay, mm -hmm. that's good. And then we had 68, 34 FTE, 68 educational assistants mm -hmm. to add in, which would help like in those classes where you had difficulty, like maybe you have a kindergarten with three, three kids or something, you put an aid in there, it really helps. Mm -hmm. And then they had some other money that they were spending, which was okay. I didn't have a real problem with it. But with the 68, with the 68 uh, educational assistants, we we're going to put one in each school. Well, this is found money. I mean, you know, I found $100 a couple of weeks ago in a drawer. 
Hey, man, I mean, you got money to spend. You got money to spend. And so this is money to spend. This isn't money that you have to really put in your budget. So my philosophy is let's spend it where it's most needed. That's right off of here. Let's spend it where it's most needed. Not one educational assistant in each each school, because some schools need it a lot more than others. And so I wanted to take that money and spend it where it was most needed which is the whole equity piece that they're always talking about. We're always so proud of our equity stuff that we're doing. But what happened was, I thought, was the school board said, I said, well, let's make a resolution, a motion here, mm-hmm. and, and second it and vote on directing the superintendent to bring us back a plan. Mm-hmm. So because we're going to meet in a week or two, bring, bring us back a plan, how to spend it, we decide. No, no, what they said Let's just have the superintendent kind of spend it. Is that that'll be okay? And, well, you know, and everybody kind of nods their head. Bruce nods her head. Yeah, yeah, that's okay, okay. And I'm going. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. We have to need to vote on this. No, no, no. We don't. We're just nodding see, our head. You know, and so, this is frustrating. so, so she goes. So she goes. I thought. I really thought she was going to spend the, the FTE money right. for the. Uh, for the class size. Okay. But she was going to bring back the EA, the educational assistant people. And, and and we were going to talk about that, and I was going to get a chance to say, hey, no, I think we ought to spend it where, you know, let's figure out which classrooms are struggling and which areas are really struggling, and let's put it there because it's found money. It's, it's not basic stuff. And, and uh well, well, wait, and, 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 and so she that. goes, and so the next meeting, I'm sitting there going, well, when are they going to bring this up? I said, hey, when are they going to bring this up? And they said, well, in in, uh, in December. I said, mm, well, December, okay. And I turned to the superintendent at the end of the meeting. I said, geez, I hope you haven't spent that money for the educational assistance yet. And she says, no, no, I spent it all. Wait, but that, I spent it all. Wait, 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 I spent it all. Wait, wait. And I'm going, Steve, Steve, what? Wait, 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 wait a minute. You got $16 million. It's some pot that's, that someone found $16 million. Mm-hmm. We don't know how much more is in that pot. No, and, we don't. And when I think about the, the $16 million, I also think about the $15,000 consultant they hired in mm-hmm. this new mm-hmm. negotiation. Mm-hmm. Now, what about other consultants? Are there, are there other consultants There's out there a lot picking of money. that kind of money? There's a lot of money hanging out. This next, this next uh, budget session budget started around January, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think it's going to be a bloodbath because we need to find out all that money that we're spending that isn't being spent directly on kids. Is right. there a huge right. amount of money? Right. Uh, we just spent 77, 79 people out for a week to St. Louis. What? Yeah, 79 people to from do our what? district. Well, they went to a, 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 a convention on courageous conversations, which we talked about some courageous time ago. Conversations where you have conversations about trying to break down racism. Nothing really wrong with it. It's fine, but it's a chunk of change to send all those people out there. We got kids in these huge classrooms and stuff, and we've been doing it now. We've spent millions of dollars on it in the last five years. Do we still need to? Send them out there. I, I guess that's what they maintain, but it's really highly questionable. I mean, we could have done that Nothing locally. Nothing wrong with conversations. Race, I like it. I, yeah, I mean, she got race talk here locally. You got, you got a young talk. lady right here. And it wouldn't have polarized right the whole school district, yeah, maybe, too. I mean, could have done it right here locally. I mean, I, But I'm just saying, though, my point is that was that beneficial? Did that, did that go in the classroom? I mean, did, was, that, was that benefit well, to if, 70 people? If teachers what are, kind of people were going If, if teachers are getting less prejudice, sure, it's helpful in the classroom. Maybe that's what they're doing. I, I 20th century. I, I got a, I got a, you know, I, I kind of wonder. We're, we're doing some, some funny things. Let yeah. me, let me tell you a Talk couple. Talk to me. Talk a couple yeah, stories. Yeah. Okay. Some other things. We, we had the, the, the ELL, English Language Learners, which is the ESL program. Okay. And we decided, the ELL people did, evidently, that we were going to have, give this test which is called the ADEPT test. It's a one-on-one test. The, okay. prince, the teacher gives it with the kids, and you find out quite a bit more about the kid. Okay. To a certain degree. It takes a half an hour per kid. And so what we were doing was we were going to pull the ELL teacher, the regular teacher trained to teach ESL, okay. out of the classroom and have them give this one-on-one test for a half an hour So, and then put a substitute into the classroom. Instead of having the substitute give the test <laughs> and the teacher staying in the classroom, and, and I'm not kidding you, I was. Uh, it was unbelievable how difficult it was to get them to dis, to change that. 
Uh, it was, you know, once the train gets running down the tracks, superintendents, I think, in the caboose, you, you can't get anything changed. It's unbelievable. I'm going to tell you a worse story here. But it's like a big ocean liner that's off course, and it keeps going. It's so hard to turn. It, it, you can kind of work with stuff if it hasn't already started, but once it started, it's unbelievable. I finally raised enough stink so they changed them, but they just kind of forgot to tell I think any all the ELL teachers that they did, they're going to give it again. That ELL teacher, the one there's one that I had talked to a lot about that, she was going to be out of her classroom over 60 hours this year, out of her classroom over 60 hours to give this test, where a substitute could give the test, and it would be fine. Oh, it's a, you might learn a little more, but you're going to learn a heck of a lot about those kids if you're in there teaching with them every day. That's how you'll really learn about kids. Well, here's a worse one, <laughs> as you can imagine. Jeez. This is worse. This, is this one I still haven't got to change. It's still out there. And there's a kid over at, and the, the mother said I could talk about this. Mm -hmm. There's a kid over at Beverly Cleary School who's incredibly uh, allergic to peanuts and other peanuts, but, are, peanuts. Yeah, 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 but, right. and and the child has asthma okay and peanuts there's it, it's an incredible reaction and the pediatrician says this kid gets peanut butter on him or something could die okay and it's like bee stings every time it happens it gets right. worse than worse right. and worse and you die so right. you don't ever want it to happen once right. Because you're going to be pretty sick, but you may not die until it keeps going. So here's the kid, and peanut butter, and, and, and so the parents under, learn about this, and the principal does a real nice job of making sure that the parents know not to send sandwiches into that kid's classroom. Because here's the here's the thing, that there's no, it's a little kindergarten first grade school, mm -hmm. and there's no cafeteria in the school, so they're eating in their room. Okay. So they talk to all the, so there's, I mean, you know, just first graders that are, can be a little messy eaters. And so they talk to their parents and get them to not send any nut products into the classroom. Parents are all fine with it. Everybody's yeah. fine. They're, they're working it through, the parents can, okay. So you don't have, so you got the parents in the school not sending in the nut stuff or the peanut butter sandwiches and stuff. So what does the Portland School District do? This is a middle class neighborhood, so if a kid doesn't, they're not a lot of free lunch kids necessarily. Mm -hmm. And so if you don't have a lunch, they give you something else. Right. Okay, they, they give you a sandwich. Right. Just, just so you won't go hungry. And right. it's a cheap sandwich and stuff, but you know. So guess what sandwich we put into that school in that kid's classroom? Peanut butter and jelly. What? Yes. And. <laughs> Peanut butter and jelly sandwiches into this, into the actually into the kids' classrooms. So they had the kids who were eating those step outside. But I'm telling you, I taught you know you know over right, 40 years. Right, right, right. You can make a mistake, man. Right. So we send even though all across the country there's peanut-free schools, we send peanut butter and jelly sandwiches into the into that classroom, classroom. where they're eating lunch. And people had knowledge of this. Oh yeah. Well, it's worse than that. I called and said, "Hey, what are we doing? How come we're sending? Why can't we send something who, who else? Send a call? big who one out." Who you call? Well, I called the nutrition people. Okay. And they, instead of talking to me, they sent me over to the, uh, sent me to the lawyer who wrote a letter saying, a "What? The lawyer, our and lawyer." Kid, and what about the kid? He's still subjected to this. Still peanut. sitting there, and we're still sending peanut butter and jelly sandwiches yeah, in exactly. to the classroom. And I, well, they don't end up in the classroom, but all you got to do is make a mistake. Kid brings it, they open it up, the teacher, some kid's sick or something, and the teacher's fooling with them, and all of a sudden, you got this kid going into So where did it go? Okay, finally, you found, you found someone that said, okay, fine, we'll take care of it. No, nobody will take care of it. The lawyer justified it. Put in the public schools. Mm-hmm. Said, well, we can't find food that's, 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 uh, uh, that's, kids will necessarily eat, you know. We need food that the kids are used to, familiar food. And and, and uh, we have the we have the the pro the national food program and we just can't they got all these people making most of them over a hundred thousand dollars a year. What? And they can't stop sending peanut butter and jelly sandwiches into this one school. The mother's going you know, wonderful woman. Going just nuts, you know, at her wits end. But what see, but see what, what bothers me about this whole thing, you guys are elected on the school board to be looking out they for don't, us. They the don't, no, no, they don't. The kids, other school board don't members they, don't pretty listen. much, they don't, dad, dad, leave it up to superintendent. That's how it's done. 
We can't get this stopped. I want to make a motion. I want to make a motion at the meeting to say, okay, we don't send, we don't send, we we have a nut free school. Every elementary school that doesn't have a cafeteria, that's only one school. Right. And so that's the motion I'd like to make, but they won't even, Greg Belial, who's the chairperson, he won't let you make a motion. You can't even make a motion. And then they, they say, oh, that's up to the superintendent. Well, isn't that nice? But how about stop sending the peanut butter and jelly sandwiches in if it's up to the superintendent, Madam Superintendent? But no, no, that's, they're still sending them in as far as I wow. know. Wow. Wow. As far as I know, they're still sending them well, in. What about the state superintendent? Did you get a little note up to the state superintendent, uh, Governor Kitts? I don't know what they could do. I don't know what they could do. Send them a little letter. Send them a little note. I suggested, uh, I suggested that, oh, Tim the, Raphael. that right. the right. mother, Tim. I suggest the mother went down there and complained to the Oregon Department of Education, and what but she hadn't gone. I don't think she's done it yet. I don't know. Well, what I don't about know. The, what I, about I the, finally, you know, I did everything I could, and they were so mad at me by the time I was done. They were angry with me. Because I was pushing to get these peanut butter and jelly sandwiches out of that school, which didn't need to be wow. in there. Send an apple and a bagel. Well, what about our new czar now, the the director, and that's uh, Dr. Nancy Golden. I mean, she, we got a yeah, nice lady. Uh, okay, did nice you call lady. Me, well, she you came out? out. She came out and talked down in. Uh, uh, in Could in, she have handled something like this? Oh no, it's not her purview. No, no, that's not. Yeah, she, but, I'm, but I'm looking at. The I don't points. know who I, the lawyers who's going to handle it eventually. You know, eh, well, it's just, they, eh, uh, suppose that kid does die, which would wow, be a horrible wow. thing. I want what I mean, how horrible it would be. But on top of that, for us, what's that mother going to open up with? I was she going to open up with 50 million? That's right. Well, they got a, they got a bucket full of money. They got 16 million. Uh, 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 yeah, that well, piece. that sixty million is gone. But it's to the that, child. Forget that about the money. I mean, you know, what about the child? Forget the money. What about the child? I mean, what yeah, about but the I mean child? It's a, you would think if they can't figure the child, yes. they could have maybe figure the money, but evidently they can't figure either. And the public should, I mean, the public should be outrageous about well, this. Well, they are. They're constantly I making outrageous. the statement that the schools don't have enough money, class size, we can't do this, we can't do this, and yet and still they're finding money all over the damn place. They shouldn't get anything as far as I'm concerned. Give the money direct to the parents. Let, let them have homeschool. What the heck? And then you guys can teach right there at the homeschool. What the hell? Huh? I mean, this, this is ridiculous. Huh? This is ridiculous, Steve. Well, that peanut butter jelly sandwich is ridiculous. ridiculous. Well, how about this and then the, one? And I this got pot of money. One. This is ridiculous. Want another one? Give me another. You got another yeah, one? Yeah. You know what? Oh letters of expectation We are? may have to open up the lines now on this piece. You here, know now. what letters of expectation are? What, what is that? Letter of expectation is you put a letter in somebody's file. Okay. S Telling them what their expectation, your expectation now, for is them to is. The teachers or to it's, the, you, they do it to the teachers. What about the superintendent? So do, you do, one, do you do one superintendent? Here's this teacher <laughs> who gets in an argument with her health care provider. Okay. And they have a little bit of words. Right, okay. She swears she wasn't particularly bad about it, but okay. you know, every you know, you have been fighting with your health care provider. Oh yeah, oh yeah, You don't eat. It, oh, yeah. it, it's <laughs> the worst. <laughs> it probably brings out your worst personality. That's right. So the health care provider calls and complains about her to the risk management people in Portland. So the risk management people suggest that they write her a letter of expectation. Oh. And a letter of expectation is, the, they, and they put it in her file that says something like, we expect that you won't get in arguments with the health care provider, even though it's not even in the school. And they maintain, well, that's fine. Well, the, the union wants to grieve it. It's one of the fights right. we're having. We okay. want to be able to grieve that because how do we know that that's even right? It's some guy outside. I mean, somebody could call up and say, "Hey, this yeah. this this teacher is a it has child porn on their computer." So you put in their file a letter of expectation for you can't have child porn in your computer, yeah. and that's not supposed to be. They mean Greg Blau himself told me that. No, that's that, that's fine. Nothing wrong with that. That's uh, that that's it's not discipline. You keep missing so Greg Blau. Who is he? Who is he? He's the chairperson of the school the board right now. What? Yeah, uh, the school board right now. Oh. But so so they maintain that's not discipline when they put that in your file. What? Yeah, it's not discipline, so you can't grieve it. You can't say you can't challenge it. In fact, they don't even tell you it's in there. That's how we treat the teachers, and the teachers are going, well, that's not right or fair, and we're going, oh, it's fine, it's just fine, oh, yeah, it's great. There you go, well, well, it's well, nuts, well, I mean, it's crazy, man, it's crazy, there's a lot of craziness going on. 
Are we going to ever get to the point where we get to the classroom and start teaching these kids so they can they can graduate? Not if you're in Common Core all the place, all over the place, and the testing all over the place. And if you do, they got so much stuff. You know, they talk about workload, and when they talk about workload in the newspaper and stuff, right. the workload is they talk about numbers of kids in your class, which is high. I mean, they're they're right. high. Right. That, they're and that high. is yeah. a that's a huge portion okay. of your workload. Okay. Or they talk about. Like an English teacher has, let's say they have 180 kids that they take all day, right. and let's say it takes you 10 minutes to correct a, a, a essay by them, which is about right if you're going to comment on it. And you got 180 kids by 10 minutes. Let me see, that's 1,800, and divide that by 60, 1,600 is 30 hours of work just to correct the test for the 180 kids that you got. It's 30 hours. <laughs> Be and beyond that's not 30 that's 30 hours beyond the work your work day so how often do you have those kids write well we want them writing all the time we want kids writing all the time right but it, the workload it's we think in those terms but what we don't think in <laughs> is it's the workload of of all the extra stuff that we're putting on teachers okay let's a new computer system a new email system a new testing that we're bringing in you know the test that in seattle they they the map test in seattle that they got out of the seattle public schools it was a big fight up mm -hmm. there and they made kind of national news we put that test in this year uh you've got uh, all this extra stuff the the common core stuff all this extra stuff that now not only do we have these huge class loads but now we put all this other stuff on top of it and then we say to the teachers hey do your job we're going to hold you accountable since you're not doing your job we're going to have we got a new evaluation system too we're going to hold you accountable and you're going i mean we literally have I've had people tell me stories of the teachers just crying after class. No, it's my because they just can't maybe, maybe, teach. Well, maybe, We're maybe, not letting well, them maybe, maybe I'm wrong. I take it that, that there must be a teacher. There must be a teachers' committee, if you will. I guess that that looks at these things and then they impose it on these teachers, right? Well, is that the way it works? No, no. Is that, is that the way no, it works? I thought that's the way it works. No. Dusty. No. I mean, One of the, the big <laughs> fight, the big the fight in negotiations, really <laughs> is the big fight, and, and everybody misses it when they talk about it. the big fight is that teachers want to have real input into the decisions mm -hmm. and they don't want to control but i thought that but was they happening. want to have no I, I, no I thought no, that was happening, no. Steve. you know i've pushed and pushed on it and it's starting to happen a little bit but basically that's what the negotiations a huge amount of it is about and it's about do well can we involve teachers in the decision making right. process they're the ones who know they're the ones who are in that classroom every day right. they're the professional educator but we can't involve them in meaningful ways well, what's the stop in the decision making. Who's stopping the process? Well, it's a combination of the people running the school board and the superintendent who are stopping that process. Well, now let's go back to quote the new the new superintendent of the of the, the uh, CEO the, the, the CEO the, right yeah, now let's go back chief education now, officer right, right, right. The, and the Oregon superintendent appointed, she appointed came Dr. Out Nancy talked, Golden. Okay. She came out and talked in okay. what was essentially down on MLK, which really was probably the I don't think I've ever seen so many black leaders mm -hmm. in one place really? as for her talk. It's the most I think I've ever seen, and I've been around. Yeah, yeah, you've been around. You've been around. Yeah. And it was probably the most. It was unbelievable. And she came out. I've watched her for two years. She came out and talked, and I'm going, no, that's not what you're doing. <laughs> what? No, you're not doing those things. You're yes. not, no, you're not doing that. You know, he talks about equity. Yeah, they have equity, but they have... But, they, yeah, what they have for equity is they have an equity policy. Equity policy. Policy. It what was like mean? our equity. Exactly. It's like uh, we're going to take equity into account in all our decisions. Well, we just spent that $8 million, didn't take equity into account, equity into account at all. <laughs> it, it, I've been, you know, trying to get them to look at the idea of going, having Going down into the schools is where you need the equity. You right. want to teach kids not to be racist, exactly. and you want to have exactly. you want to have historical, exactly. you know, history, yes. black history, yes. Latino yes. history yes. into right. those schools. You want to have that Why cultural is that stuff. Uh, well, be, we're focused on the adults trying to make them so they're not racist. I guess. I mean, they're accusing me of being racist, not too long ago. Jesus. No. Well, in fact, let's talk a little bit about uh, yep. Dr. Golden here. Okay, what she, uh, she makes uh, several points about her, uh, her focus, if you will, in, in terms of her platform uh, uh, while there. Uh, you talked a little bit about equity, ensuring that each and every student, regardless of circumstance, receives a quality education. 
Uh-uh. I'm lost here. Wait a minute. Wait, 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 let me, wait, no, wait, wait, let me, let, let me, let me do this one more time. I'm, I'm lost here because you just went through this whole spill. Let's see. Equity, ensuring that each and every student, regardless of circumstances, receives a quality education. What's the equity thing about that piece? Well, every theoretically, they're saying every child should get a quality education. But what Dr. Nancy Golden and nobody down at that Oregon Educational Investment Board has done. They have their own little equity uh, equity lens, they call it. They're looking at everything in an equity lens. But what you really need are those ra- what are called wraparound programs right. where you got the kid who's struggling at home and you you make that bridge to the school. Right. Right. That's right. what right. you need. Right. They haven't, they've got, they do now, they're going to put a couple grants out to support some of that, a little bit of it. Finally, after two years. Gee. And it's, but it's little grants out. It's not statewide. It's not anything like that it's put out a few grants it's like uh, the, the governor does that with all his programs right. we'll take a grant here oh this grant goes to my old buddy over here and then we'll do this grant oh it but goes to my crony over here he, no he was a teacher he, he was a teacher the governor yes no they uh, <laughs> and they and, and my grant will go to this little buddy over here so i don't know who's getting these grants they're already decided as i understood but Jesus i may be Christ. wrong who steve we're going we to come in but i got three others i want to okay look outcomes Building a seamless system from birth to college and, and, and career that ensures a high-quality education for all Oregonians. Well, they are working on making a seamless system, but they sure aren't working to make sure it assures a high-quality education. Wow. The sy- system's going to be seamless, but the education got a long ways to go yet. But, but, that, but, but they got a seamless system. But that's her background. Seamless system. Well, but that's yeah, her background. Yeah, yeah. She's yeah. an educator. Yeah. For years. Yeah. Uh, transitions, <laughs> working across the system to better support students doing key educational transition points from preschool to elementary and from high school to college or the workforce, and to driving policy efforts to more effectively move students along the educational pathway. Boy, that's huge. Well, <laughs> what they do, instead of sitting down and saying, look, all kids need these things, and they pick little spots. So third grade reading. And they, they've, research shows that third grade reading has this effect, so we're going to focus on third grade reading. To act with fourth grade reading, fifth grade reading, sixth grade reading, second grade reading, <laughs> first grade reading, and kindergarten, well, not, not much reading in kindergarten, but we're pushing on it. But so, and it's the same thing. They, they focus in on these little spots instead of looking at the across whole the board. Yeah. across the board. And we're doing that in Portland. We have our milestones. And, and one of the milestones, which is a halfway decent one, is good as, you know, getting kids to graduate. Okay. That's a good thing. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. That, that's oh, a good yeah. thing. That's a good one. So yeah. that's a milestone. Yeah, that's a good And thing. we have an attendance, sixth grade attendance one that they have. That's a milestone. But, yeah, that's a milestone. But uh, why third grade reading, heck, if everybody reads in the first grade... Then they're probably going to read. Those kids going to maybe do pretty good in the second. Right, third. Right, I mean, or right. or what about the kids who can't read in the sixth grade? Why right. aren't we focusing? I mean, this milestone idea is is it allows them to kind of build it on what they think is research, even though it's not very good, and it's it it, it makes them kind of feel like they are doing something. Gee. Oh, uh, let's go on one, one more time. Okay. One more thing. Let's see investments. Recommending outcome-driven investments to the governor and legislature that best support the student success, like well, the $16 million. Dollars. <laughs> that part of money that right. from. Well, the, I mean, the problem with the money. investment system is it's the same as the government. The, the United States government does the same thing. They'll give you money to do this program. Well, you got 50 school districts, and one gets the money to do the program. Well... And supposedly the idea is, well, if this program works there, we'll put it the other. But they don't have ones that are set up like that. And basically, I hate to say it, but who gets the money? The government's cronies. And the government's cronies districts. And the government's, I mean, the go- I said the government, I meant the governor's cronies, the governor's district, the governor's the friends. They get this money, and it's all out there in grants, and then... You know, and they get it, and then, so if you support the governor, you're going to get these. So grants. that's where the pot of money comes that's, from. That's where the pot of money. Now, no, so. now we finally got to the point of the sixteen million dollars. Well, I see what happened here. Now. <laughs> the <laughs> point, the point is that that they justify it by saying that we're going to make these investments. Investments. Investments, like you invest in something, and what they do is give money to the governor's cronies. 
and the cronies of the other people, it's kind of all inbred a little bit. Ooh, Steve. And so the investments Steve. don't really, they're not really able to scale them up. Steve, boy, what a dismal update. It's not a happy <laughs> This is not, not a happy it, update, it, Steve. It, it, I'm expecting it, more from you, Steve. Worse. I'm looking at all it, this it stuff, worse. Steve. It's I mean, are worse you than be... I thought, Bruce. <laughs> Jesus Christ. It's Steve. worse than I thought. I, I'm sorry I supported you. <laughs> I mean, it's I mean, worse you, than you I thought, man. fishing or golfing or something. Uh, Jesus yeah, Christ. I'm not making much Oh yeah, my I'm not God. making well, much hey, stick in there. Hang in there, okay? Well, yeah. So I got about a minute and a half here. What's the lasting point you say to the voting public out there and to the mothers and the fathers who who've got kids in this school? What do you say to them? got to... Tell them what hopefully they'll begin to follow what actually is taking place, how it's all in the back rooms, not in the school board. And in the long run, then, when it's in the back rooms, you know how that stuff works. Yes, yes. you got to get it out, get it transparent, get it in the public, make decisions in public so that people know what's going on, and therefore you can hold people accountable. If those people in the back rooms aren't even voting on stuff, right. How do you hold them accountable? You no. don't even know. No. I mean, if all no. the school board nods the money yes, in, right, right, then right. did they nod? Did that guy nod or not? I Steve, don't know. Well, look, Steve. Well, thank you very much for the update. We're going to, uh, you know, and, and that's the other thing I would say to the, the viewing audience out there: Hey, go to those meetings. You got to go to those meetings. Pick up a newspaper. You know, what I mean, it's, it's there, but you got to read between the lines. But that's what we hear at the Oregon Voters Digest. That's why we support Steve, and that's why we've got him here today to give you the uh, the real what's happening at your school and why your kids are, are failing. Okay, demand it. Please demand the fact, and that's the only way we're going to be doing. So anyway, go. There's go some up to good the stuff board. going on out there. there. Good There's some good There's stuff some good going stuff. on out in the school district. I don't yeah. want to just be all. But, yeah, but finding 16 million dollars and stuff like that—that's that's, that's something that we have some concerns. Because boy, we got taxes to pay. Folks, thank you very much for being with us. And uh, hey, uh, tell your friends about the show. We got repeats. Look at the show again. Boy, it was, lot, it was a lot of stuff that was discussed. Thank you again, Steve. We appreciate it. Okay. Thank you for okay, having me. Okay, back to what you believe in. We'll see you next week. Take care. Bye.